ओम ज्ञान कमरान दर्शन यानाशना शिलाकया चक्षुर्मीन तस्म श्री गुर नम श्री चैतन्य मनोदृष्ट स्थापित मे न भूतले स्वयं कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरो वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम सागर जात सगन रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतरो कृपा सिंधुभ्य पथि भावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे खे सो वी विल स्टार्ट यर दी सेकेंड चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता फिफ्टीन श्लोक यम ही नतयुषम पुषर्षभ सम दुख सुखम धीरम सोमृत कल्पते Oh, best among men, Arjuna, the person who is not disturbed by happiness and distress and is steady in both is certainly eligible for liberation. It's a very nice uh, um, point that we can see. This is the point of knowledge. This is the point of liberation. You now that is uh, mentioned. So, if a person is supposed to be liberated or uh, supposed to be very elevated, so then this is the parameter. by which we can actually judge this uh, advancement that is um, samadukka this uh, samadukka sukham deeram so this is the um, like a parameter that he should be undisturbed in happiness and distress and is steady in both right okay for for anyone who study in his determination for the ad, uh, advanced stage of uh, spiritual realization and can equally tolerate the onslaughts of distress and happiness is certainly a person eligible for liberation in the varnashram institution the fourth stage of life namely the renounced order sanyas is a painstaking situation but one who is serious about making his life perfect surely adopt the sanyas order of life in spite of all difficulties the difficulties usually arise from having to sever family relationships to give up the connection of wife and children but if anyone is able to tolerate such difficulties surely his path to spiritual realization is complete similarly in arjuna's discharge of duties as a kshatriya he is advised to persevere even if it is difficult to fight with his family members or similar um, similarly beloved persons uh, lord chaitanya took sanyas at the age of 24 and his dependents young wife as well as old mother had no one else to look after them yet for a higher cause he took sanyas and was steady in the discharge of his higher duties that is the way of achieving liberation from material bondage so this purport may look very harsh but then um, now this is um, as we were uh, discussing yesterday uh, in terms of in the shrimad bhagavatam discussion wherein where we were discussing about the aspect of a video game right so in video game there is so much of um, like uh, rules and regulations are there there is so many stages that are there and then so many things that are there you know it appears to be um, very very important when we play the game but actually it is just a game so in the same way like here all the living entities all of us you know we are into this game of material uh, world and all of us have got a body and all of us have to uh live with this body and things like that but then ultimately we have to realize that we are soul and we have to get out of this world at certain point in time we have to quit this world and quit this world means not just giving up the body or dying no that is not quitting the world so quitting the world means to come to the stage of samadukka sukha and um, also to get attached to the lotus feet of the supreme lord 
some lifetime somewhere we have to do this job you no know? some lifetime somewhere we have to do in every lifetime we cannot just simply be attached to all the material ties that we have so some lifetime we have to take this call you no know? millions of lifetimes we have lived for uh, like a family affection and uh, you know all the material ties and things like that but sometime we have to take this call that enough is enough now we have to you no know, progress towards uh, serious uh, krishna consciousness right so this is the stage of sanyas and generally a person at the age of 50 or something like that you no know, he enters into the sanyas ashram and um, like um, he has to uh, give up his uh, comfortable family life and things like that generally like in the old age um like uh, a man becomes um dependent on the family members and sometimes the family members think him to be a burden on the family but before they think him to be burden he himself should get out of that comfortable uh, situation and he should uh, you no know, try to depend on the lord and uh, you no know, live a life of uh, sacrifice and uh, renunciation so that is what is recommended in fact it is mentioned that uh, for a man to die at home is not a very uh, very good thing you know like uh, the moment he uh, does his duty properly and then he should uh, just vacate the home he should go out and then he should not people should not even know like where he is dying so that's how the great kings you know all of them after their their time is finished you know after their uh, after they give the charge to the next generation they will immediately quit the palace and they will go to the forest and do tapasya and where they will leave the body you know how they will leave the body nobody will know so that is how you know that's that kind of a uh, death is considered to be very nice you no know, very um, um, you no know, rewarding spiritually very um, very rewarding kind of a death so that's uh, even in the first chapter of bhagavad gita we saw that if a person dies in the battlefield or if a person dies performing austerities um, you no know, that is considered to be great Uh, so dying at staying at home is not a very good uh, this one right so that's what uh, uh, the scriptures actually talk about okay so text 16 nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate satah ubayor api drishtontas va anyo tatva darshi bihi those who are seers uh, of the truth have concluded that of the non existent the um, that is the material body it is considered to be non existent uh, why it is considered to be non existent because it is it is a temporary body and then it is uh, even in this very lifetime it is changing so many times so it's actually as good as non existent now we cannot say that this body uh, will continue to be there uh, no even next month no we will have a different body I means it constantly goes through transformation that's why it is mentioned as um, like uh, it is mentioned as like non existent no so of the non existence there is no endurance no there is no endurance and of the eternal that is the soul no which doesn't change no there is no change in in the eternal so this they have concluded by studying the nature of both so the learned people right so it is mentioned those who are seers of truth no they have concluded this body is temporary and it is always going to remain temporary and there is no endurance of it and the soul is permanent and it is there is no change in the soul the soul is always ever existing okay, okay purport there is no endurance of the changing body that the body is changing every moment by the actions and reactions of the different cells is admitted by the modern medical science and thus growth and old age are taking place in the body but the spirit soul exists permanently remaining the same despite all changes of the body and, and the mind that is the difference between matter and spirit by nature the body is ever changing and the soul is eternal this conclusion is established by all classes of seers of the truth both impersonalist and personalist in the vishnu purana it is stated that vishnu and his abodes are um, all have self illuminated spiritual existence um, jyotish jyotim shri vishnu bhuvanani vishnu hu the words um, existent and non existent refer only to spirit and matter this is the version of all seers of truth this is the beginning of instruction of 
by the lord to the living uh, to the living entities who are bewildered by the influence of ignorance especially yeah so this portion is a very important portion um like uh, krishna has started speaking about body and soul just few shlokas before onwards he started speaking about the difference between the body and soul um i think from the 13th shloka onwards so and that is the beginning of the instructions that krishna is giving to all the living entities right okay removal of ignorance involves the reestablishment of the eternal relationship between the worshipper and the worshipable and the consequent understanding of difference between the part and parcel living entities and the supreme personality of god it one can understand the nature of the supreme by thorough study of oneself the difference between oneself and the supreme being understood as the relationship between the part and the whole so because you know we are part and the lord is the whole just by studying us we can actually understand about the supreme lord who is uh, who is the whole and um, in the vedanta sutras as well as in the shrimad bhagavatam the supreme has been accepted as the origin of all emanations uh, such emanations are experienced by superior and inferior natural sequences so this is uh, uh, no rahul prabhu was asking this question a uh, no, few days back why is this natural sequence that is used in this uh, particular uh, shloka so we were uh, it is because uh, no parasha shaktir vividaiva shoyate swabhaviki jnana bala kriya cha this swabhaviki it is a natural thing so material energy and spiritual energy are natural for the supreme lord it is not something that needs to be uh, extraneously um, no he has to use like for example money is my energy no i have secured i have earned some money that's my energy but i have to use the money i have to put some endeavor to use the money but then um, the lord's energies are not like that they are so natural to him and just by his thought process everything functions you no know, everything actually happens that's why this is uh, called as the natural sequence you no know? like everything is emanating from the lord you no know, what is emanating from him you no know, whatever comes out of him is different kinds of energies and such emanations are experienced by superior and inferior natural sequences okay hmm the living entities belong to the superior nature as it will be revealed in the 7th chapter although there is no difference between the energy and the energetic the energetic is accepted as the supreme and the energy or nature is accepted as the subordinate the living entities therefore are always subordinate to the supreme lord as in the case of master and the servant or the teacher and the taught such clear knowledge is impossible to understand um, under the spell of ignorance and to drive away such ignorance the lord teaches the bhagavad gita for the enlightenment of all living entities for all time okay so this is how the lord is trying to dissipate the ignorance by speaking bhagavad gita and in this way like uh, and what is the knowledge that we need to get that vasudeva sarvamiti sa mahatma sudurlabah so vasudeva sarvamiti everything that exists is vasudev and everything that exists is emanations from the supreme lord and those are divided into the superior energy and the inferior energy right so this is this is the very very basic set of knowledge that uh, anyone should understand to get into the uh, spiritual knowledge okay that uh, krishna is giving in this chapter okay text 17 avinashi tu tad viddhi yena sarvam idam tatam vinasham avya yashyasya na kashchit kartum arhati that which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul purport this verse more clearly explains the real nature of the soul which is spread all over the body hmm. anyone can understand what is spread all over the body it is consciousness everyone is conscious of pains and pleasures of the body in part and as uh, or as a whole this spreading of consciousness is limited within one's own body the pains and pleasures of one body are unknown to another therefore each and every body is the embodiment of an individual soul and the symptom of the soul's presence is perceived as individual consciousness this soul is described as 110000 part of the upper portion of the hair 
in in size the svetashvatara upanishad 5.9 confirms this balagrasata bhagasya satada satada kalpitasya cha bhago jiva sa vigneya sa chan sa sa chanantyaya kalpate when the upper portion uh when when the upper point of a hair is divided into 100 parts and again each of such parts is further divided into 100 parts each such part is the measurement of the dimension of the spirit soul similarly the same version is stated as keshagrasata bhagasya chatamsha chadrshatmakah jiva sukshma swarupo yam sankhyayito hi chitkanah there are innumerable particles of spiritual atoms which are measured as 1/10000 of the upper portion of the hair so from two different sources you no know, shila prabhupada is um, substantiating this the whole point of mentioning this particular thing is to say that you no know, each body has its consciousness and we can actually feel the consciousness throughout our body and the other bodies you no know, pains and pleasures we will not be able to uh, you know identify or feel so but then um, uh, like you know we can actually uh, feel our our body's pain and pleasures so that means we uh, as a soul is pervading within this entire body is one individual unit and the another person is an another individual unit because i don't know what is what he is going through so in this way like you know we are all individuals and we have our specific individual consciousness and then be the individual soul is so minute that is 1 10000 the tip of the hair you know that's how much we are so small we are right okay let's continue therefore the individual particle of spirit soul is a spiritual atom smaller than the material atoms and such atoms are innumerable and this very small spiritual spark is the basic principle of the material body and the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body as the influence of the active principle of some medicine spreads throughout the body this current uh, of the spirit soul is felt all over the body as consciousness no consciousness is the symptom of soul so whenever we talk about the consciousness or whenever we talk about the soul no it's synonymous actually no consciousness and consciousness is the way in which we can actually identify soul presence of soul okay okay this current of spirit soul is felt all over the body as consciousness and that is the proof of the presence of the soul any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is what is a dead body and this consciousness cannot be revived in the body by any means of material administration therefore consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination but to the spirit soul in the mundaka upanishad Uh, the measurement of the atomic spirit soul is further explained esho nur atma chetasa vidit vidit viditavyo yasmin prana panchata samvivesha bhanais chittam sarvam otam prajhanam yasmin vishuddhe vibhavat desha atma the soul is atomic in size and can be perceived by perfect intelligence the atomic soul is floating in the five kinds of air prana apana vayana samana and udana is situated within the heart and spreads its influence all over the body of the embodied living entities uh, when the soul is purified from the contamination of the five kinds of material air its spiritual influence is exhibited okay? the hatha yoga system is meant for controlling the five kinds of air encircling the pure soul by different kinds of sitting postures not for any material profit but for liberation of the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so the constitution of the atomic soul is admitted in all vedic literatures and it is also actually felt in the practical experience of any sane man only the insane man can think of this atomic soul as all pervading vishnu tattva so sometimes people think that you no know, they become god by meditation so little bit of powers they can get you know by meditation and immediately they think that they have become god so but we are so minute a soul we are anu you no know? anu means like the atomic soul 
we are very very small and we can never become equal to vishnu no who is the vibhu who is the greatest okay the influence of the atomic soul can be spread all over the all over a particular body according to munda kumbhanishad this atomic soul is situated in the heart of every living entity and because um the measurement of atomic soul is beyond the power of appreciation of material scientists some of them assert foolishly yeah some of them assert foolishly that there is no soul the individual atomic soul is definitely there in the heart of in the heart along with the super soul and thus all the energies of the bodily movements are emanating from this part of the body so that's heart is the most important area where the soul and the super soul resides so krishna mentions also ishvara sarva bhutanam hrida desha hrida desha it is a very important point hrida desha arjuna tishtati so it is in the region of heart you know the soul and the super soul resides okay um the corpuscles which carry the oxygen from the lungs gather energy from the soul when the soul passes away from this position the activity of blood uh, generating fusion ceases Uh, medical science accepts the importance of the red corpuscles but it cannot ascertain that the source of the energy is the soul medical science however does does admit that the heart is the seat of all energies of the body such atomic particles of the spirit whole are compared to the sunshine molecules in the sunshine there are innumerable radiant molecules similarly the fragmental parts of the supreme lord are atomic sparks of rays of the supreme lord called by the name prabha or superior uh, energy so whether one follows vedic knowledge or modern science one cannot deny the existence of the spirit soul in the body and the science of soul is explicitly described in the bhagavad gita by the personality of god himself so this is a very nice point like how the consciousness is pervading the entire body and uh, that is the symptom of the soul right and um, you know the heart is the seat of the soul and the super soul and all the energies of the body actually emanates from this part of the body okay antavantai me deha nitya shokta sharirinah anashino aprameyasya tasmad yudya swabharat the material body of the indestructible immeasurable and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end therefore fight or descendant of bharata so like here very important point is it is not that just because the body is temporary material body is temporary anyway it will be destructible so we can go about uh, killing people that's not what krishna is mentioning here so here krishna is mentioning the body is anyway indestructible you no know, in discharge of one's prescribed duties one should not uh, hesitate or one should not step back because uh, you no know, he has got uh, what is that uh, he has got attachment to a temporary thing no material body so the the eternal duty cannot be given up for a small petty reason right so it is like um, um you now we can we can cite an example for this right so for a child to um, go to uh, the school is a very important thing not at the right time appropriate time right so sometimes uh, the children may have a deal in the game that you know we will not uh, quit the game till the end of the game you no know, we will not uh, go out in middle right so they have a you know packed like that and then they are playing in that way and suddenly the mother comes and says hey it's time to school you have to go or probably time time to tuition or something like that and um, if the child holds on saying that i have given a promise to this boy that i will play till the end how can i you know quit this game and come and mother will say like it's, it's a play you no know, you cannot be so serious about it you no know, you have to go to school so something of that sort here we can see that you no know, we definitely till the time the play is there um, the rules matters you no know, we should not cheat and things like that but when there is a higher duty then we have to give up the lower duty so here krishna is mentioning you no know, like compassion for the body is okay but then when there is a higher duty of establishing dharma you no know, you are thinking about uh, this material body and uh, you no know, conditions of this material body and you no know, who will be killed who will not be killed 
and if you win whether will there will be people to share your enjoyment with and things like that or oh, this is all foolish no don't think about all these things don't allow anything to come in the way of executing dharma right so dharma has to be executed even though it is bitter no so that is something that krishna is actually mentioning that uh, you now you are trying to give up the dharma and worrying about this material body so this material the material body of the indestructible indestructible here means the soul the material body which is possessed by the soul uh, like um, is sure to come to an end therefore fight you no know? don't think and feel about those things you no know, keep importance for your duty as a kshatriya as a fighter or as a as a dharma sthapaka you have to establish the dharma you no know, now don't step back you no know, for silly reasons you know that's what uh, krishna is mentioning here purport okay. the material body is perishable by nature it may perish immediately or it may do so after 100 years it is a question of time only there is no chance of maintaining it indefinitely but the spirit soul is so minute that it cannot even be seen by any enemy by an enemy to say nothing of being killed as mentioned in the previous verse it is so small that no one can have any idea how to measure its dimension so from both view points there is no cause of lamentation because the living entity as he is cannot be killed nor the material body uh, be uh, saved for any length of time or permanently protected the minute particle of the whole spirit acquires this material body according to his work and therefore observance of religious principles should be utilized in the vedanta sutras the living entity is qualified as light because he is part and parcel of the supreme light as sunlight maintains the entire universe so the light of the soul maintains the material body as soon as the spirit soul is out of this material body the body begins to decompose therefore it is the spirit soul which maintains this body the body itself is unimportant arjuna was advised to fight and not to sacrifice the cause of religion for material bodily considerations you know it's not a license to go about killing people it's about in the discharge of duty if it comes to the point of killing somebody and if it is the bona fide duty that needs to be discharged according to the vedic scriptures and guidance of superior authorities here in this case krishna was personally there so if uh, that is the case that is a dharma to be followed then it must be followed you now we have we cannot step back saying that oh no i have compassion to this material body and things like that we should not do that okay yayenam vitti hantaram yaschainam manyate hatam ubau ubau tho na vijani tho nayam hanti na hanyate neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer nor he who thinks it slain is a knowledge for the self slays nor uh, not nor is slain so it's basically like uh, you cannot basically kill a living entity you cannot uh, uh, what is that uh, uh, the the self or the, or the soul doesn't cause anyone to be killed or doesn't you no know, get killed also right so that's how uh, this shloka is let's see the purport when an embodied living entity is hurt by a fa- fatal weapon it is to be known that the living entity within the body is not killed the spirit soul is so small that it is impossible to kill him by any material weapon as will be evident from subsequent verses nor is the living entity killable because of his spiritual constitution what is killed or suppose or is supposed to be killed is the body only this however does not at all encourage killing of the body the vedic system is mahimsyat sarva bhutani never commit violence to anyone nor does understanding that the living entity is not killed encourage animal slaughter no like uh, anyway like living entity cannot be killed so i can you no know, maintain slaughter house and kill animals and eat them no anyway the soul is not killed i am just taking the body so it is mentioned we should not create himsa so then what's the point of mahabharat war they were also creating himsa so the violence need to be used when it is needed it cannot be indiscriminately used no everything that is there in this world um, no there is a right way of doing it and there is a wrong way of doing it 
and if we know the right way of doing it no nobody can say that you should not eat but no a doctor may prescribe that you should eat so and so things it is other things are not good for you uh, this is what is beneficial for you so that something uh, do's and don'ts are there in the same way there is some do's and don'ts for violence the violence in itself is not bad but unnecessarily unwarranted violence is bad no one should not get involved in that okay killing the body of anyone without the without authority of uh, authority is abominable and is punishable by the law of state as well as by the law of the lord arjuna however is being engaged uh, in killing for the principle of religion and not whimsically so here we see that it, the point is very nicely clarified that uh, krishna is mentioning that you should fight you should not be worried about this temporary body but at the same time krishna also mentions at the same time it is justified here that we cannot just go about killing people unwarranted it must be for the purpose of dharma no a king is liable to punish the criminals no and in the same way like uh, the parents are liable to um, like uh, correct the children sometimes by the way of chastisement and it may look like why such harsh actions but it is necessary so in the same way in the bigger picture um in the governance of the state and you no know, like uh, things like that violence is necessary and it has its place in the dharma and we should know how to use that uh, if we are a kshatriya you no know, we have to use it in the proper way or at every level there is a proper use of violence you no know, only that much it should be used and it should not go beyond that point right so um we will kind of stop here today just a moment hey krishna hey krishna 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 hey hey hey